at the same, the same time. Ready? You guys have so many questions about steak. I can go faster. Steak. And we're going to answer them. them. Steak questions, lay it on it. First question. If you don't have a meat thermometer, how many minutes per side when grilling, cooking a steak will get you to medium rare? Such a classically flawed question. question. How many minutes per side? Oh, God. It entirely depends on how thick the steak is. Is it cold? Is it room temp? There's is, no way. Is, is it a skirt steak? Is it a four fat? bone ribeye? I can't what answer cut? this question. What how hot is, it? is your grill? How, how hot's hot your is your grill? grill? You could do the old, uh, the old right here yeah. test, okay? okay? Basically, the point is when your steak cooks, the proteins and like muscle fibers tighten, so a steak that feels very soft, that is, that gives when you press and doesn't spring back, is a raw steak. Loose is rare, real rare, raw even. Firm it up, medium, huh? Overcooked. Oh, wait. It's a really accurate model. Wait, what is it? It's true. This is a useless test. When the proteins cook and tighten, it'll spring back and be firmer, so you can kind of poke at it. Use a little intuition. Stop, just think about what you're doing. Linda Heston asks. Cast iron or grill? Grill. Uh, cast iron. Cast yeah. iron. More contact. More contact. More, more. Cast iron on the grill is great. I also do that when I have a grill, which is at my parents' house. What do you like about the grill? I feel like you get so much more of the smoke flavor. You get a better crust on a cast iron, but you don't get the flavor of smoke. I'm totally team cast iron because I want a nice, crunchy, crusty, crusty. Crust. Okay, so this is the grill cooked steak, and this is the cast iron cooked steak. And I feel like you're developing so much more of a crust when you're using a cast iron than you are when you're using a grill because mm -hmm. all of the slats in between the grates aren't making contact with the steak, mm. and then you aren't getting that caramelization. But then you do also get from a grill, if it's a wood fired grill, you would get smoky flavors, you would get that outdoor ambiance. And I feel like if you move your steak around enough, which mm -hmm. is the thing I do, eventually you could get a good crust. Like right. this grill? No, thank you. Totally. I agree. Grill in your freaking backyard? Yes, sure. please. What is the best way to get a good crust? Uh. OK, crust lady. Ooh. So you want to start by making sure there's no moisture on your steak so you get a good sear, right? Mm -hmm. Do you feel good with where I'm going so far? One, dry out the steak, yep. so leave it uncovered in the fridge, paper off. I even like to, if it has a bone or if it, there's a, it's a sturdy, thick enough steak, I'll stand it on its side so yep. that the bo both cut faces. You can leave it out. like that in the fridge, totally uncovered on a rack for like a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Good crust, make sure your heat, make sure your pan's heated all the way. You don't want to throw your steak on a cold pan. Right, right, right. So you want a really hot cast iron. Um, and I start with oil and then finish with butter because the butter is going to burn. And then do you do, are you into the just keep flipping? No. No? No. I'm a just keep flipping. Of course you are. And then also don't disturb your steak. Let it hang out. The people, like, people's Playing inclination right. is always like, oh, I got to touch my food all the time. I like to flip it every 30 seconds to make really? sure you get a really even crust and it like cooks evenly. If your steak is thick enough, so at least an inch, inch and a half, I really do love the frequent turning method. Wait, so, oh, that's like, <laughs> that is gnawing at my soul. It's gonna get crusty, it's I swear. It's gray, it's gray. We're just gonna keep flipping. Okay, now explain to me the logic in this. Every time you flip, it's like this surface is cooling off. So mm -hmm. then when you get back onto that side, it, it helps develop better crust. Kind of like when you do the triple cooked potatoes. Oh, that's nice. You want to see the crust? I do. Vanna White hands. Best way to get a good crust on a steak is to use a hot cast iron. Flip about a thousand times. A thousand times, precisely. And um. Butter based. Butter based. You read this one. What is the best way to make steak without smoking up my entire apartment? Grill it um, outside. I always cook steaks in cast irons. But instead of coating the entire cast iron pan in a slick of oil, I coat the steak in oil and mm. keep the cast iron dry mm. so that when the steak makes contact with the pan, the only oil that's actually going up in smoke is the oil that's directly on the steak. And there's not all of this extra oil that's getting hotter and hotter and hotter as the steak cooks and causing more and more smoke. That's a good tip. I also personally really like the reverse sear method. Mm. Slow roast it in the oven. 
pull it out. Hit it with a little, little Earl, and then ha ha, just hit it real hot. Yeah. I prefer to broil mine. You literally want the flames to be touching the top of the steak, and so it is actually like uh, grilling. What's the best way to season steak, and at what point do you season the meat? First of all, let it sit out at room temperature yeah, temper for like an hour. Temper your steak. That's what you do first. First you temper, then you season aggressively. And then after you slice, a little flaky salt on all the slices, because if it's a really thick steak, even if you season it way in advance, you, you still need a little extra yeah. for those center cuts. So we disagree on this one. I'm very much a season in advance, at least an hour before. I want the inside of the steak to be well seasoned. Um, mm -hmm. You want salt on the outside for the crust. Because I can't plan very well. So. I mean, you bought a steak, just like season it as soon as you get back from the market. Stop yelling at me, Rick. What's the best oil to pan fry steak in? I don't like the term pan fry. I feel like I'm inclined to just start with a neutral oil, mm -hmm. like canola or safflower or grapeseed mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, you can use any vegetable oil, really. I use olive oil, I use grapeseed oil, I use canola oil, I use peanut oil. Personally, for me, I always neutral, do a cheaper olive oil. I do flavor, a cheaper olive oil. Unless you want a cheaper olive cheaper oil. Cheaper olive oil. This whole like, narrative about how olive oil has a lower smoke point and like burns, like, eh, has that ever really <laughs> bothered me? No. And, wait, and, you and you makes two. Asks, should I bash, bash it with a hammer? hammer? Uh, no. No. Wait, what? Bash what? Why? The steak? Do you have anger issues? <laughs> Should I bash it with a hammer? I think that generally, like the idea of like tenderizing meat is kind of like misplaced. Like sometimes you want to pound a steak to kind of like even out its um, thickness, mm -hmm. or to kind of like loosen it up a little bit, like we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. But generally, I don't. I don't feel like pounding meat tenderizes right, it. Right. Right. You know. Right. High gravity two one one asks. How best to reheat steak? Uh, I mean. I'm a firm believer in not reheating something that's already been cooked to a certain temperature. No, eat it cold. Don't. Yeah. What's wrong with cold steak? Okay, so this one is just room temp, not mm -hmm. reheated. Pan, microwave, oven. See, this is the thing about reheating steak is like, however you heat it, you're, you know, if you were trying to get it to a certain temperature, you're, it's you're already losing, sliced. You're losing the temp. You're no losing what. the temp. So it's yeah. not going to be medium. But there's rare degrees anymore. of losing the temp. But we added browning. That's which true. Is cool. I know, which is kind of appealing. That's microwave steak. I don't even want to eat this. Yeah, it's so gray. Go microwave your steak. Go microwave your steak. Least, but this is the, of, of, the of, of these methods. This is the most still pink. Still pink. And yeah, because a gentler heat. See, that's so good to me. Yeah. I don't understand why you need to heat it up. Should I buy? Grass fed. It seems all good and nice, but I was told it tends to have less fat. Is that real or a rumor? <laughs> Some Amish adjacent guy at a party told me corn fed is the way to go. Well, we don't need to bring people's Amishness into it. Cows eat grass, right? That's what they're designed to eat. Uh, don't get me wrong, I like fatty meat too, but basically you're giving it, when you get it grain finished or something that has been feeding on grain, it's unhealthy for the animal. It's basically like feeding it candy or soda yep. to get it fattened up. You're getting all that in, you're making it his whole body fat and basically unhealthy. Yeah. Um, and really the thing about, about grain fed is that the flavor of the steak is totally one dimensional, right? There is a lot of fat, but fat is the dominating flavor. With grass fed, there's layers to the yeah. flavor. There's more going on. It's more interesting. And you taste the meat. You, you know? taste the I meat. don't yeah. mind leanness. Another way to answer this question is saying, get to know your butcher and get to know really where your meat is coming from. It's not like grass fed is always the more ethical or healthier or what, you know, fill in the blank choice. What's the best way to cook steak for, um, for a crowd? Uh, cook a lot of them. Yeah. Mm, I mean, this is, like where the grill comes in handy because if you have a yeah. large grill you can like just line the steaks up yeah especially um, if you stick with like something that cooks fast like skirt or yeah. flank yeah those are good hearty steaks you have like 15 people over for dinner all the time i, I think reverse I searing not. a big thick cut of meat is mm -hmm. the way to go because then you reverse sear it it comes up to temperature it can sit on the counter for like an hour and a half uh -huh. two hours and then whenever you're going to sit down to dinner you just 
flash it in the pan, get the crust you're after, slice it, and you're good to go. You don't even need to rest it. Hmm. I think party steak. Yeah. Which yeah. We have a recipe for it. Anna Stockwell. Yeah. Developed party a recipe steak. for a party steak, which is a skirt steak. Was skirt, skirt, right, Anna? Yeah. So the good thing about a skirt steak is that they're pretty big. They come in these like kind of long flaps and they cook really, really quickly. Um, and so in both of those ways, you can feed a lot of people without having to turn a ton of individual steaks, which is like definitely something you would want to avoid. Is there a shortcut for bringing the steak to room temp before cooking? No. No. I don't know, a warm apartment? Not really. No, I, I mean, it's fine if you don't. It's yeah. not a make or break thing. I mean, and actually sometimes like, you know, if it's, if it's on the thinner side, it's actually better to pull it um, directly out of yeah, the fridge yeah. because the center will stay cooler longer. Yeah, you're less um, likely to overcook. Right. Does searing a steak actually seal in the juices? I hear people, even professional chefs, say that all the time, and I think they're full of S, H-I-T. Yes, they are. They totally <laughs> are. It's a complete lie. It's an old chef's tale that needs to die. I kind you're, of agree. You, it's you're like, not like, like, I don't know the science of it, but you're yeah. not literally sealing in the juices. You haven't created a... Right. Yeah. It's, but the thing that does seal in juices is after you take your, your steak out of the pan, after it's cooked, let it hang out, let it sit. Yeah, don't go rest, slicing rest. into it right away. Then all the juice is going to lean out of the steak. Yeah, rest, you want, you want the muscles to come, tighten up a little bit. Yeah, and then the juices kind of reconstitute back yes, into it. exactly. What's something you can do to save overcooked steak? Uh, no. You can't, really. Oh, uh... No, not really. Uh, sauce, saucy. Go saucy. And thinly slice it. Very thinly slice. And season, and again, like, you've got some salsa verde, you've got some spicy mayo, you've got some really good olive oil, you know, you Lean compound into the condiments. butter. Yeah. Just, you know, kill it with sauce. I would, I would like doing a little, if I've... Braise it out. I mean, I never have overcooked steak, no. but say were to have overcooked steak. In tomato sauce with pasta, a little shreddy, Ooh, shreddy steak. Put it in so braise Done. it out. Yeah, braise it out in tomato sauce. There you Done. go, braise it out. Ooh, thinly slice and Philly cheese steak it. Yeah, it's Turn still it gonna be. Turn it into quesadillas. Be. Chop it up for nachos. <laughs> Why do people get judgy when I order it cooked, not cooked. as opposed to raw? Cooked all caps. Like I, think I would, nice. I think. Well done. Well done. Ah, uh, because well, it's gross. Yeah, just don't eat a steak. Maybe you don't like steak. No, on your shoe. <laughs> it, that's why they're judging you, because you have bad taste, <laughs> and you're not good at eating food. And maybe you should grow up. I don't, well, not about that part, but I don't disagree about maybe the you first should grow part. Up. Um, it's just, just people are judgy. Like, people are awful. And maybe it's just not like the optimal way to eat a steak, but if it's the way you like eating yeah. a steak, then stand by that. Yeah. It's fine. You should eat your steak however you want. Right. I don't care. That's not what you just said. <sighs> Great questions, guys. Hope we helped you out. Happy staking. Steak crazy. Thanks for playing. That's my fun, favorite fun game. <laughs> it's fun. It's it is favorite. fun. I can't even talk. <laughs> <laughs>